Welcome back to Imola and the Drivers' Press Conference. And as you can see, we're joined now by Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel. Welcome, guys. Good to see you. Sebastian, why don't we start with you? It was a tough weekend in Bahrain for the whole team. How has it responded to that first weekend? Um, well, as you mentioned, obviously it wasn't a great weekend for us. Uh, both in terms of uh, you know all the things that happened, uh, then uh, in terms of result. But um, I think we we went through a lot of, uh, or basically everything that happened, and I think um, yeah, the response has been quite positive. Obviously, um, you know the spirit is great in the team, and you know I'm willing to put everything in that I can to try and try and understand, try and help, and uh, try and have a better race uh, this weekend. So I think we are well prepared and we'll see what we get. We, I think, learned a little bit about our car to understand a bit more uh, where it wants to be and um, try and take it from there. Uh, obviously, we're not quite where we expected or wanted to be, but uh, it is what it is now and we um, yeah, have to tackle, uh, tackle it bit by bit and yeah, take uh, one step at a time. But that's, I think, what we are, it feels like what we're doing. Thank you, Sebastian. And Lewis, coming to you, in a way, it was a tough weekend for you as well, albeit with a very positive outcome. But when you look at the pace differential between yourselves and Red Bull, how do you reflect on Bahrain? Well, firstly, yeah, I mean, I generally had a positive feeling naturally um, with the result and a good reflection on the weekend I think it was a very difficult weekend for us I think um, it's clear that Red Bull have, have started off um, really really well and uh, with a great package and, and Max is driving really well so it, it's set up for a good season ahead and of course we don't know what to expect moving forwards into these next races with different um, temperatures and different track surfaces but it's going to be fun one way or another. Great, thank you. And before we move on uh, to the video conference, uh, we have a fan question for you guys. Take a listen to this from Vittoria. Hello, I'm Vittoria, and my question for you is, what animal would you like to be and why? What animal would you like to be and why? Hmm. We spoke about dogs earlier. I think it would be nice to be a dog for a day. No? Really? Depends, I mean... <laughs> Just the sleeping around depends one? Depends if your if you're keepers or your or whatever, the people that you or your family takes you for a lot of walks and does fun stuff with you or not. So I guess you can be lucky, but um, I, would, I, would, I, th I think more... I would prefer, rather than be a dog only for a day, I'd prefer to be a bird, to fly around. I think that would be, yeah, quite cool. I'm um, just trying to think of the name. I don't even know if it's the right name. Is it Pterodactyl or something like that? It'll be a, is that the flying dinosaur? Is it right? Oh yeah, that's the one I'd want to be. So now I can see, I'd rather, I want to go back to the dinosaur era. <laughs> or a T-Rex. <laughs> My eyes would be too small. <laughs> thank you guys, and thank you to Vittoria as sure well. Hands. Now we'll go to the video conference and let's start please with Giles Richards from The Guardian. Uh, thanks Tom. Uh, next question for Lewis. Lewis, it appears you are clearly going to be in a fight with Red Bull this season. Um, I'm just wondering, do you take a different approach to anything you do psychologically or around the car, around the way the team operates um, when you, given that you are in a fight with another team for, for, for the first time in some time rather than just with your teammate. Thanks. Nothing changes for us. We've, we, uh, we approach every weekend exactly the same as we always have. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think um, we've had multiple battles with Ferrari, with Seb when he was at Ferrari. Um, and I think it's, we just got to keep our heads down and continue to do what we do. We, we love the challenge. And as I said, it's, it's exciting for all of us that we do have such a challenge on our hands and it's not one that we shy away from. Thank you. We'll go next to Abhishek Tackler, please. Midday. 
thank you, Tom. Uh, question for Lewis. Um, uh, the dynamics of the battle that's developing between you and Max, uh, they've been compared to the Senna Schumacher rivalry that sadly we never saw come to fruition. Uh, my question is, does this battle with Max uh, have the makings, do you think, as one of the great rivalries of Formula One? And how much are you relishing it? Thank you. Look, we're only in, you know, we're only going into the second race, so I, I, I really, um, I can't assume and I can't guess what's up ahead of us. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know. I hope it's exciting for the fans. I hope it is, um, it's all that it's cracked up to be, um, particularly for the fans who, you know, and then particularly in a time where we need the best entertainment possible for for the fans. So. Um, for me, it's fighting with Seb, fighting with Valtteri, you know, you just want to be fighting with the best drivers um, uh, and as close as possible so that you can hopefully try to eke out a little bit more than your competitors to, to get the results. While on the topic of rivalries, let's go to this email question from Louis Decker at NOS Next. Uh, question very simply to both of you is... What is your favourite rivalry in Formula One history? Seb, let's start with you. Um, well, obviously, as a child, I was a big Michael fan, and I think uh, him with uh, Michael fighting with Mika, uh, I think uh, there were a couple of years that were very intense. Um, then, obviously, you go, you go through history, there's the Senna Prost, which is the obvious one, but I wasn't really old enough to to understand. Uh, I probably watched them with my father, but the races, but uh, <laughs> I don't remember much. Um, yeah, and for everything be before that, I think it's even further away in a way. So um, yeah, I think probably of all time, uh, it's probably the Senna and Prost because of the intensity, also because of the differences in characters and I think it was a different time. I think nowadays the whole world has matured and even if you have different interests and different opinions but uh, I think we have grown up as people to be able to talk to each other despite different views on certain things but back then there was I think a certain intensity just because people weren't as tolerant as, as, as they are today and probably not as mature so there was a lot of bitterness and hate hatred as well so I think we've come a long way since then um, to maybe not have these intense fights anymore uh, off and mostly off the track but I think on track the fights are still very intense but I think you probably will not see something like that uh, anymore in the future just because I think we, we've moved on and progressed. Uh, look, I've got a really bad memory but I'm going to go and say mine and Seb's uh, battles my favourite up until now so far okay Seb what did you make you. of <laughs> what did you make of Lewis and Max going wheel to wheel in Bahrain well I mean I saw obviously uh, the highlights after the race and uh, yeah I think um, Max was faster I think he had uh, better tyres at the end of the race but Lewis was smarter and drove well and uh, kept his head down and did, uh, did what he had to do so I think he had in that regard nothing to lose and everything to win and he came out and won so speaks for him and um, you know Max I think had a chance or should have as I, as I said he was faster should have won the race and didn't win the race and Lewis won the race so I think in that case it's really Lewis that won the race. Thank you. Let's go to Jens Nagler please from Build. Thank you. A uh, question for Seb. Um, Seb, starting um, from this weekend, I think, um, we have a new champagne in Formula One, um, although it's not exactly um, champagne as it's sparkling wine. Um, and it's called Ferrari. Um, how do you like it? And uh, do, you, do you think you can, you can get a taste of it this season? Uh, I, haven't, I haven't heard, so I, I don't know. I, d I don't know. I haven't... I've driven Ferraris, but I haven't drank I didn't drink Ferraris so I, I don't know obviously at this stage we're a bit further away maybe with rain on Sunday we're getting a bit closer but uh, I'm sure I, I, I can ask Lewis on Monday <laughs> he's a bit closer to the podium 
I don't like bubblies, so I, I won't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's go next to Luke Smith, please, from Autosport. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, so a question for Lewis about, again, the track limits uh, in Bahrain at Turn 4. Um, Max spoke earlier. He said that basically he found the FIA's policing of it messy. He said he wanted to talk about it in the driver's briefing. I just wanted to know, and now you've had a couple of weeks to digest it, what are your thoughts on it? And would you rather the FIA make it very clear and stick to one rule instead of changing things mid-race? I mean, I've not thought about it uh, uh, a lot since the, the race. I think... It was very clear for, for me um, when we were sitting in, I don't really know why they, I don't really understand, I mean, that, that corner is an odd one, isn't it, turn four? Well, they made it quite clear in the driver's uh, yeah. briefing before the race. They said if you can do, um, you know, your bit with the curb, uh, with the lit track limits in qualifying, and mm. obviously if somebody gains a clear advantage, then they have to look into it. So. Yeah, but then in the race they said they weren't policing it. In the notes, it says it will not be policed, and then, so then everyone would just yeah. Running. Unless I guess, unless you have a lasting advantage, if yeah. you're fighting for the lead, that's yeah. as much as an advantage yeah. you can get if you pass. So, them, so. It was definitely. Then all of a sudden, they got the message in the race, and it was unclear exactly um, initially. But I just made change. I didn't lose any time. Didn't gain any time. Um, it, if anything, it helped save the tires. And um, looking at the data, just as quick, so. Um, it's no real issue for me. And on this topic, Maxime Mallet from Le Keep says, uh, Sebastian, did you hear anything from the FIA about your idea to use strips of gravel? No, I, I mean, we've, I don't know, we've talked so much in the last couple of years about runoff areas and solutions and ideas. So I think it came up a couple of times, but... Uh, Obviously, it's not that easy because we share the track with other categories as well and everybody has a different preference. But I think from our side, it's quite clear if we had more gravel or more penalty when we lose more of a penalty when we, uh, sorry, lose control or uh, get go off the track, it would be a, a natural penalty, uh, a natural limit. So you would have less of these discussions, I guess, going forwards. But as I said, it's not always easy to make a change. Thank you. Let's go next to Christian Menat from motorsportmagazine.com. Thanks, Tom. Uh, question for Sebastian. You've said after the race you've had in Bahrain, you were quite fortunate to have a three weeks um, gap between the races. You've mentioned that the team was able to look into data and so on, but what have you personally been able to do in this three weeks to get back to the performance you want to? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I think... Uh, it was good for us to have a bit of time, good for myself. Obviously, um, you know, the first race weekend was very busy and uh, there's a lot of things that uh, we still have to have to understand and have to learn about the car. And I think it just helps to have a bit of extra time for myself. I mean, to spend time in the sim as well to just try and get on top of a couple of things and understand how the car probably wants to be driven. So basically just tune myself and try to uh, get in a better better shape for the, the races that are coming up starting with this one so uh, I think in this regard it just helps to have a bit of time to, to go through all these things Thank you we'll go next to Ed Straw please from The Race Yeah question for Seb obviously in, in Bahrain you had the, the incident in the race with uh, Esteban Ocon see whenever you have incidents like that you look back over them and understand how to avoid repeating them but over the past few years there have been a, probably a few too many for, for your liking of these mistakes so is that frustrating you that, that these things seem to be happening particularly when you're in close proximity with another car maybe a bit of downforce loss and is there anything you can do to kind of prevent them happening because it must be, be a situation that's frustrating you to have these errors repeating well I think frustration is the wrong word because frustration I think doesn't lead to anything so uh you know, I think the key is that I understand what happened and I think I did and uh, you try to learn from it. So, um, yeah, I'm quite sure it wouldn't happen again. Um, but, uh, yeah, as you said, obviously, uh, going forwards, um, you know, there's always things that you can learn from your mistakes and what other mis uh, what uh, mistakes other people are making. Um, but for sure, I mean, the the target is to... Yeah, have 
clean races and not to have anything uh, interrupting that. So I think that's um, the expectation I set of myself and as you said as well, um, the level that I want to be at obviously doesn't, uh, uh, how can I say, doesn't excuse things like this happening. Thank you. We'll go next, please, to Ben Hunt from The Sun. Thanks, Tom. Uh, just a, a question to both drivers. There's been a change to the schedule this week, so we don't have the clash with uh, Prince Philip's funeral. Is that the right thing for F1 to do? Um, do either of you have thoughts on, on that uh, at all? The other question was, Sebastian, I understand um, you did a course in eco-farming. Is there any way that you can get Lewis involved in this? I'd love to see you both um, having a tractor race in the future somewhere. Do you have any serious questions? <laughs> that is, oh, that is actually a serious question to you. <laughs> I was going to follow up with the dinosaur chat, but um, no, they are serious questions, I'm afraid. Well, Sebastian, let's start with the eco farming as, as you. Um, well, I didn't do a course, but I uh, uh, just did like a yeah, work experience um, on, uh, on a farm because I was interested and in, uh, I think if you become aware of certain things, you start asking questions and then you want to know a little bit more. So that was the, the intention behind and it was really interesting. I, I think I learned a lot, but um, yeah, I think we all have different uh, interests uh, off track. Um, and for the timing of the race, I don't know, I guess it's just to make sure that there will be a, you know, a slot for, for us on, in TV where people aren't zapping into or tuning into something else so I, I don't know that I guess that's the background but yeah and Lewis please uh yeah I think it's um I, I don't see it being a problem I think um the Duke, and, Duke of Edinburgh was uh was such a racing fan and um it's it's so sad uh, uh to hear of his passing I think he had a a really great long life um, and I know he was really committed to in, to to um, to have an impact in, in helping young young people and inspiring I think it's really inspiring the legacy he's left behind and so you know my, my thoughts and prayers are with um, Her Majesty and the family and and um, yeah I hope that we can continue to race and, and I'm sure we'll be watching from above Thank you. And before we move on, eco farming. Uh, I don't really know a huge amount about it. If I'm really honest, <laughs> obviously we won't be doing no tractor racing, but um, but I think it's really uh, quite an important uh, step forward in, in technology and understanding. So I'll probably have a chat with him about it. But just looking at the new technology moving forward, this is the direction that uh, we need to push in in order to uh, help save the planet. Thank you. And we're going to push in one more question. Rebecca Clancy from The Times, please. Thank you, Tom. This is a question to Lewis, please. Um, just following up from an earlier answer, uh, and I take on board what you say about your memory, but was there anything in particular that made your battle with Sebastian your favourite? And obviously we're all getting excited about the fight this year with Max that you have on track. Is there anything that needs to happen this season for perhaps the battle with Max to become one of your favourites? Thank you. Well, I think it's, of course, like Seb mentioned, you know, growing up and seeing some of the, the, the other battles, you know, one particularly that we lived through was obviously watching, um, you know, Michael's dominance and his racing. But, of course, I was, too, I was so young in watching the Senna era, so I didn't get to remember too much of it. Of course, we saw the, the battles with him and, and, and Cross, and we can see those today in videos. But I think it's just knowing how hard it is to be where we are today, knowing that I was racing against a, a, you know, a, an incredible driver and, and not only that but a great man in Seb is a four time world champion that is you know, ultimately when you're racing against and as we were racing against another team at the same time he was at Ferrari I think uh, at which were, who were very strong at the time so it took a lot out of both of us I think in, in that period of time to remain focused to deliver weekend in weekend out and and um, I think whilst it was a difficult period for us, I think it probably brought us closer as well because the respect that we have between us is, is I, I think, is huge. And um, so it's different now, of course, um, if, if I'm racing with Max, you know, he's, 
he doesn't have the background that uh, that Seb has, but he's he's obviously got the the the, um, the chance of being a future champion. And, um, whether that's now or, or later uh, depends on the job ultimately that uh, the team and I do. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you, Seb. That's all we've got time for. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you.